I'm going to explain the Astatis video in a general sense so that a normal person can generally grasp the lore. I've explained parts of this to three or four friends now, and I'm a bit tired of it, so I'm making a video for easy reference for them. To my fellow brothers and sisters of 40k fandom, this is going to be vague, broad, overgeneralizing, and hopefully quick. And as the saying goes, if you guys are wondering who the good guys are in 40k, the answer is annoyingly, yes. Now there is no talking in this film, and the reason for that is they have communication and other sensors in their actual helmets, so they can talk to each other and we can't hear them. Here at first you will see an Astadi's blessing a weapon, that's because they are religious. Think Jim Jones religious. Now these men you're seeing here are actually about 7 to 8 feet tall and weigh about a thousand pounds to one ton of pure muscle and armor. They are superhumans. They are taken as children about the age of 10 or 12, mentally wiped of memories, not identity though, and bioengineered to burn the heretic, kill the mutant, and purge the unclean. So they are human supremacists, religious zealots, and can think, move, and react three times faster than a human. These two orbs here are defensive drones. They're designed to intercept incoming fire and missiles for the boarding torpedo. Yes, this is a boarding torpedo. So for clarification, this kind of maneuver would turn you and me into tomato sauce spread across the inside of the ship. Imagine suddenly stopping at 600 miles per hour for comparison. Now the men you see here, they are, well, anyone. They say they're rebels, but they could be any one of millions of different factions. The human empire, you have to understand, spans the entire galaxy, which is a very large place. There are millions and millions of different groups. Now the bullets that the Estadots are firing are not bullets. They are literally mini rocket propelled grenades. Think of 50 caliber explosive round with a rocket propulsion hitting a human body. And a quick aside, if you think six space marines or Astartes are not enough people to really do this, please remember that in this universe that 500 Astartes would be considered overkill to take over our planet if we were prepared and the whole planet bands together.
Now again, nobody knows what the hell these things actually are, but we can guess. For me personally, these are automatons that are controlled like puppets by a warp entity, as we will see later on. Probably the head and spine are grafted onto the willing or unwilling participant. Yes, that means they had to remove the previous owner's head and spine. But for Warhammer 40k, that's light saw stuff. Now the shield he put up is considered a psyker power. Magic in 40k is considered psychic powers, and this power comes from the warp. Now the warp is basically a reflection of our own universe, but with demons devouring everything. So being a psycho or utilizing psychic energy always comes at a risk, a very nasty risk. Think tapping into hell to access magic powers and you have the gist of it. Now those papers hanging in the hallway are prayers of protection of some sort. These are used to protect ships and estates, and they work depending on the person's belief in such things. So these are probably being used to protect or shield the ship from whatever is in, the, in this room, or in case whatever is in the room gets loose. Now this is a psyker from the Empire of Man that is part of the Inquisition. Think of our own Inquisition and you know exactly what they do. He is hooked up to this warp entity and is probably there to monitor, contain, or even guard it from trying to get loose. This is suicidally dangerous. Now the Astatis you will see in a second coming up here are wearing white helmets. This defines them as being in charge. Now this again is whatever you want it to be. For me personally, this is another automaton. The orb you will see in a minute, I think controls this. I think controls all these. 
And if you notice, the heads and the spines floating in the background look identical to the two psychers they last fought. And as a side note about psychers, if a psyker is strong enough, he can control entire solar systems or in total planets. They can control hundreds of billions of people at the same time if they wanted. So controlling this many robots, if powerful enough, is child's play. Those spikes for me are more than likely a communications array so that the psyker on the ship can eavesdrop or see what the orb here is thinking. Why use spikes? Won't that hurt? Why would you care? They're dirty scummy xenos, you heretic. As far as I can tell, the two orbs that are communicating, one is the strike team orb and one is on board with the psyker. So the strike team orb says who is there. The psyker orb responds with something I can't understand. The strike team orb then replies with I have failed brother, I have failed, we have all failed, the Astatis deny our touch, break your seal and return. The strike team orb says impossible, we will never survive. The psyker orb tells the strike team orb Take the Alpha. Remember what I told you about being possessed if you touch the warp or use psychic powers? Also a thing I think a lot of people have missed is that they have communicators in their helmets so we can't hear them. So imagine how loud this chanting this psyker is doing must be if we can hear it outside his helmet, but we can't hear his voice. <laughs> Now that might have seemed like overkill, but it really wasn't. A human takes one shot to be killed by a bolter round. A possessed psyker can take three or four clips of bolter rounds and can take out five or six Astatis before it's killed. 
This was an assassination attempt. Now, the thing that had a hold of him when they went inside the warp got shot by something else. I don't know if you missed it. If you did, rewind and watch it again. And here, this I think this needs a little explanation. The warp is hell pretty much. But imagine you had four Satans all vying for control from each other. Stack on top of this, you have an unnumbered amount of lesser Satans all fighting for more power against them, each other, and everyone else. That shot could have been from any number of them. It reminds me of an old saying, when the fox hears the rabbit scream, he comes quickly, but he doesn't come to help. Now, where did he end up? Nobody knows. I can't find anybody who does. Just lots of guesses. He could end up anywhere you think he ended up and be perfectly correct. Could be a planet in the warp. Could be a planet in the galaxy. Could be another galaxy. Got no idea. Thanks for watching. Hope this was entertaining and I helped a little bit about it. And have a great day, everybody.